for a school subject called personal project, I was originally going to build a CNC. However, after having experience setting up CNCs at school, I wasn't too sold on the idea because it was time consuming and it wasted a lot of material. Therefore, I decided to build a pen router mostly based on working design, the TS1 knows pen router XL. And because I'm doing the project for a school subject, I can use it as an excuse to use some of the tools in the school workshop. I've got all my drawings printed out and I'm going to start by making the router mount. I've jigged up my table saw to make a 45 degrees cut. So I've experimented with different drill bits to see which one can get a hole that is a snug fit for a 5mm stainless steel rod, which I'll be using for the pentagraph mechanism. Now first I used a 5mm brad point bit and that yielded a really loose hole with quite a bit of play in it and then I tried drilling a pilot hole with a 4mm brad point bit and then reaming the hole out with a 5mm normal drill bit, a V bit and that gave me a really snug hole that has very little play in it and I've cleaned up the two pieces that make up the router mount so that the holes are perfectly aligned to each other With that done, I can use the bandsaw to cut out the hole for the router. For some of the more complicated parts, I am using one-to-one -one templates. So to help fit the router on, I am going to strip the handles and strip off anything that I probably will not need for this. So after much fiddling, I still can't get the back plate to fit in. It is just a little bit too narrow, about 6mm. So I'm going to take 3mm off of both sides. And by the looks of it, I'll have to take some more off at the front as well because it seems to have a bigger gap there than there. Oh, it just fits in. Now that the back plate fits on loosely, I can start thinking about securing down the router. So this is how it's actually going to look like. With two steel rods going through the router, and then I'm going to put a piece of wood over that, and then screw that down, and that should be secure enough.
Well, interesting enough, they aren't actually parallel. I'm using the tip of the spade bit to create a pilot hole for the 11.5mm V bit. Since I don't have the correct size drill bit for the 12mm guide rods, I'm going to use my closest drill bit, which is 11.5mm, to drill out a pilot hole and then use a 12mm router bit to remount the hole. So while searching through my router bits, I found I actually have a 12mm concrete bit and I'm going to use this instead to ream out the holes. I'm now going to cut a little bit off the piece of wood so that it exposes the steel rod and when I screw it down it will actually clamp down on the steel rod instead of the piece of wood. In order for this machine to work I have to mount the collar of the router exactly center between these two steel rods and to do that I have made a special jig that has two holes drilled on both ends that correspond to the holes in the router plate and then another hole that's exactly centered between those holes and then that's going to help me line up where the router is going to be. Once it's upside down and it's clamped down by its own weight and now I can mark out the screw holes. Well, even though this is looking pretty good, I'm still not going to glue it down permanently just yet. I'm going to make the other pieces and then test them all together before gluing it down. Before the pieces cut out, I can start marking out the holes and drilling them on the drill press. To assemble these pieces, it's going to be really difficult to try and get everything aligned while the glue is making everything slip around. So I'm going to do it just like how Matthias did it, which is basically to clamp one of the back rails to the piece of plywood base without any glue. And then with this background as a guide, I can glue on the others like that. And now I'll just have to do the same for all the other pieces. Before I can glue up the operator lever, I still have a little bit of machining to do for instance, I need to make a data right about here for the steel rod to clear through and I still got a couple holes to draw out in the handle. Once the glue has firmed up, I can glue on the back rail as well. After the glue has dried overnight, I can cut off some of the corners. I've been playing with this a little bit and I've tried assembling it together. The operator link fits in just fine. Uh, but the short link and the long link doesn't fit together at all. The holes don't line up. As you can see, there's quite a bit of difference. So, after checking with my drawings and measuring, I found that 
this bit is actually 25mm from the edge, but it's actually supposed to be 13mm. So to fix that, I'm going to carve a channel out around about here with my table saw and hopefully it will fit together. Just clears. Well, this seems to work alright. So now I have the confidence to actually screw these pieces down. I've got everything clamped up with a piece of plywood at the bottom to prevent twisting and another block of plywood at the top to prevent this whole thing from collapsing on itself. And I think I should be good, hopefully. If anything that comes out on square, I should be able to adjust it since I'm only screwing it together. So now I can actually start making the template follower here and a handle to go around here so that I can grab hold of it. Ah, oh, looks like I've drilled a hole in the wrong place. So look, I'll have to plug this hole with a dowel and a re-drill the correct hole beside it. The panograph is now fully completed and in the next video I'll show you how I made the base.